An entire year after starting, I finally reached Red Dead Redemption 2's end credits a few days ago, and I feel relatively confident in saying that, drumroll please, it is a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece, a title which is unrivaled in so many ways, a technical achievement the likes of which no developer has come close to matching. Even when talking about my favourite games of all time, and I'm talking about my top 10, the absolute tippy top, there are a few I would describe as breathtaking, and Red Dead Redemption 2 is absolutely breathtaking. It's also deeply flawed in many ways, and that is why it took me 12 months to finish it. One moment I would be left in awe by whatever clever touch Rockstar had included, the next struggling to contain my frustration due to design that at times could be described as antiquated. And that, my dear friends, is why Red Dead Redemption 2 has left me so confused. Prior to playing it, if you'd have asked me whether a game which isn't always fun to play, or at times is even actively annoying, but is amazing in other ways could be considered a masterpiece, hand on heart, I think my answer would have been a resounding no. Gaming's raison d'etre, after all, is your direct involvement in events, and if participation isn't enjoyable to at least some degree, then does that not defy the medium's very purpose? Hit me in the manhood. Don't worry. <laughs> They've come out his ears! <laughs> Despite my claiming up front that Red Dead Redemption 2 is a masterpiece then, there remains a niggling doubt in the back of my mind as a result. I still do not truly know what to think, and even while writing this script, I'm not sure whether I've properly reconciled my thoughts. So, for my own benefit as much as anyone else's, I thought I'd chat a bit about why the game is so special, why it can be so irritating, and then circle back at the end to this idea of it being a masterpiece. A small disclaimer here too, I lost most of my footage of Arthur Morgan's Wild West Adventure a while back due to a hard drive failure, so everything you see on screen is from chapters 5 and 6, which means there may be spoilers throughout, you have been warned. In terms of why Red Dead Redemption 2 is a masterpiece, it's all down to Rockstar's take on 1899's United States. Any regular viewers watching will know how much I generally hate the trend towards open world gaming we've experienced over the past decade or two. So often, a gigantic map is little more than padding for uninteresting and repetitive side content, to the extent I'd say the vast majority of those I've personally explored are disrespectful to their audience's time. That's not to say there aren't some I'm a fan of for varying reasons, my favourite being the Witcher 3, a living, breathing fantasy land, but in general I think size is often conflated with quality when mostly the opposite is in fact true. Out of all the open worlds I've experienced, and believe me there have been many over the years, there are none which compare to Red Dead Redemption 2's in terms of the level of artistry, the attention to the little details, the amount of love which has been poured into its every corner. As I said during the introduction, it is a technical achievement that no developer has come even remotely close to matching. Perhaps Rockstar themselves will manage it soon, at the time of creating this video Grand Theft Auto 6 is a year away from release, but other than them, I just don't see it happening. The world is intricate and dynamic to an absurd degree. Sections of it shift and change over time, it feels like every part of it serves a purpose, and the NPCs who inhabit it are animated to a staggering extent. That's it! I'm gonna knock you upside your head! That's the word for I bust a pair of you! Gather all them not you! This ain't how it looks! Where most open worlds, in my view, are mostly either used purely as a backdrop for the game which unfolds within them, or as a means to add content to extend length, Red Dead Redemption 2's I'd describe more as a simulation. Even with its main mission, side quests and collect em up content stripped away, with there being no immediately apparent goal, it would remain an absolutely fascinating place to explore. Now granted, there are a few other titles I could sort of say that about, but even then, none hold a candle to the remarkable level of detail featured in Red Dead 2. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that it is one of the greatest accomplishments in gaming. While its detailed world is Red Dead Redemption 2's pièce de résistance, I do also want to praise its story, although maybe not in the way you're expecting. The plot which unfolds over the course of the game is great, the tale of a gang who are quickly becoming fish out of water as they live through the dying days of the Old West. Arthur Morgan especially is a wonderful character, even if Rockstar tries a little too hard at times to make you forget that he's also a pretty awful person. This country 
is man unleashed. That's the thing, and it ain't my fault any more than it is man anyone else. Man unleashed? Then unleash goodness. Not just hell's feeble brother, sir. But how? I mean, all I know how to do is fight, I guess. I was set free to fight. As good as both of them are though, it's not Arthur's quest for redemption or the gang's story that impressed me most, but rather that idea of the Old West fading into memory. I've always detested the idea that a setting can be a character, because it can't. A setting can have its own distinct characteristics and mood, however, and the best of them often reflect events in a story. That is what Red Dead 2's world does to perfection. From the railways zigzagging their way into the frontier and the modernised Saint-Denis with its streetlights and developing technology, to the smaller stories you encounter as you explore and the articles in various newspapers, everything feeds into the central theme the overarching story is focused on, that the age of outlaws and gunslingers is on its way out, to be replaced by something more civilised. I could honestly write thousands of words on this subject alone, and perhaps one day I will, but suffice to say, the way Red Dead Redemption 2's world is used to support its story and core themes is also unmatched. Ok, so that's a good bit of gushing about the game, but now I shall gush no more as I talk about issues which helped create that niggling doubt mentioned earlier. For one thing, Red Dead 2's mission design is formulaic at best and downright restrictive at worst. The formula is almost always the same, particularly during main missions. You watch a cinematic, then you ride somewhere, either something will go wrong immediately or sometimes you'll perform a mechanically uninteresting, repetitive menial task before that happens, then you shoot your way out of trouble, watch another cinematic and Bob's your uncle. When I say mechanically uninteresting menial tasks are repetitive, I mean it too. During one of Chapter 6's missions, I had to walk a spool over to multiple bundles of dynamite, and then during the next mission I chose, I had to carry multiple bundles of dynamite over to various places. <sighs> we sure got a lot of this stuff. We'll need it. What makes matters worse is that everything is incredibly railroaded. A good example I actually have footage of is the hanging of Colmo Driscoll. After taking out one of his gang who planned to disrupt his execution, you grab a rifle and oversee the grim event. Upon him being bought out, I decided to put Colm out of his misery, concerned that he might otherwise find another way to escape. Unfortunately, the game did not like even this minor display of ingenuity and promptly showed me the mission failed screen. The lack of freedom most missions afford you starkly contrasts with the open, brilliantly realised worlds they take place within. Then there's also a continued commitment to realism which at times is simply too much. Allow me to define what I mean by realism here too. When I finish camping and I then have to watch Arthur tidy everything up before I can move on, that is obviously not realistic in that it only takes a few seconds and he barely does anything on screen. It is, however, realistic compared to how other games might handle similar, where you'd not even have to tidy up your camp or you'd hit a button and it would simply disappear. There are levels to realism, essentially. Rockstar is perhaps too focused on realism sometimes. Being stuck with only my pistols because I forgot to take my larger weapon weapons off my horse, that is not good realism. NPCs being nigh on omniscient in their ability to detect any crime you've committed, that is not good realism. The constant animations to get rid of your camp, to skin an animal, to open a drawer or cupboard, that is not good realism. Some of you watching might argue that they only further the feeling of actually being in the world, but as discussed, many of them aren't a one-to-one -one depiction of whatever act they're trying to depict to begin with, so I see no reason why Rockstar couldn't have minimised or removed many of them. And don't even talk to me about being forced to walk whenever you visit whichever camp the gang is currently hiding out in. It is excruciating. Even with these misgivings, and believe me when I say that these are but a selection, there were still lots of gameplay I loved too. This is about the only game where I found joy in just riding around checking out the scenery or watching what people were up to in more populated areas, and I enjoyed many of the gunfights too. The controls aren't the best, but the way enemies recoil when shot and bounce off the environment as they hit the ground added weight to combat and looked great throughout. Many of these criticisms could perhaps be put down to my lacking patience, but conversely, I've also spent 60 to 70 hours of my life playing what I would describe as a very slow-paced game, so I really don't think that's the case. 
Right, to quickly summarise what's being discussed so far then, Red Dead Redemption 2 is astonishing when it comes to world building and attention to detail, but is decidedly old fashioned with regards to much of its gameplay. And so we return to the question, can Red Dead 2 be considered a gaming masterpiece when it's often not fun to play? Ultimately, yes. It's a strange one, as I'm not convinced I'll ever revisit the game due to the issues I have with it, which for most titles would be a pretty damning indictment. At the same time, and I think this is the first occasion I've said this about a game during one of my videos, Red Dead Redemption 2 transcends the medium. It is a game, but it is also something more, an extraordinarily vivid depiction of a time long past we'd otherwise never be able to experience ourselves, one which retains value even after much of its gaminess has been stripped away. And that, in the end, is exactly what makes it a masterpiece. Thanks for watching the video, boys, girls and gunslingers. If you had a rootin' tootin' good time, do consider liking, subscribing and sharing your thoughts, and hopefully we'll catch up again soon.